Hello and welcome to another presentation. So in this presentation, I'm going to show you the migrations of the Nilotic people moving down the Nile. As you guys can see, this is my little presentation, or not my presentation, but my PDF book here, Nilotic Connections to Ancient Egypt and Nubia. If you're watching this video, this book is probably out, so be sure to go and check this out to see all of this information with much greater detail. Also, if you want to check the references, make sure it's legit. You will also be able to see that all in here as well. Uh, you'll be able to see that in the reference list. And I'll probably make an individual copy of that as well if you want to see that. So we're going to jump into it. Okay, so first we have the proto nilotic people. So these were the Nilotic people. Uh, early Nilo-Saharan pe speaking people living in Lower Nubia. As you can see, the uh, time period is 8000 BC. I'm not really going to show you guys uh, waste too much time here. So this would have been around this time at 1000 BP. BP is before present, so before today. So BC and BP, there's a difference. So this would be 8500 BC. Um, as you can see, we have these groups of individuals living along the lower Nubia region. Okay, in northern, the very, very, very north of Sudan and the very southern parts of Egypt as well, uh, as we can see here. And then... A couple years later, between three and five thousand years later, we can see that there was a big uh, migration, you know, and dispersal of Nilotic or proto Nilotic speaking peoples. And this is when we start getting the admixtures of the Cushitic people as well, starting around like seven thousand, in between seven thousand and five thousand years ago. And so, uh, just a heads up, the Nilotic people mainly lived around here. This is where we migrated to, mainly areas around here, which is lower Wadi Hawar, and I'll illustrate that more on. So here, obviously, we got a uh, facial reconstruction of the Mesolithic men from Wadi Halfa. Wadi Halfa is somewhere around here, so it would have been like around here. This man also would have lived around the same times as around here, so like 10,000 years ago is from the Mesolithic time period. So he would have lived somewhere around here, would have been amongst these different peoples, and this is what he looked like. This is a facial reconstruction. Here we just have a little um, little linguistic branch of the Eastern Sudanic um, languages. This is by Claude Rilly. Uh, we have Northeastern Sudanic, Sermic, Nilotic, Jebel, Timin, and Daju. So these are the Eastern Sudanic speakers. And the reason why this is I'm, I, I show this is because, according to Claude Rilly, the Eastern Sudanic speakers, these were the Eastern Sudanic speakers who lived here. Some sites here, here and Naptaplea, other places in Egypt. These were Eastern Sudanic speakers of the nilo saharan linguistic family. According to other scholars such as Demindel, I believe he says his name, Eastern Sudanic started here. But regardless where Eastern Sudanic started, whether it was on this river called the Wadi Hawar or in Lower Nubia, the, the people still have the same origin in this area. And so here we just have a little craniometric uh, analysis and description of the Mesolithic Nubian skulls compared to like uh, other Nubian skulls. So this is from a study on uh, lower Nubian um, skulls from different time periods. And, you know, as we can see, you know, these are the features of the Mesolithic Nubian. So it would have been people like this man. Okay, and now we have... Just again, a more comparisons of the phenotype of the Mesolithic Nubians compared with uh, the Dinka phenotype or the Dinkade phenotype. Um, paintings of ancient Kushites, um, Dinkas, Nuers, a Kushites, Dinkas, Kushites, Nuers, Kushites. This was a Kushite. This was a facial reconstruction of a man from Meroe who probably lived around post Meroitic periods, I believe. And again, it's the same thing with labels. And so here we're going to get into some studies from Becker, 2011. Okay, and this is going to be very crucial in understanding the migrations of the Nilotic people and even understanding Cushitic people as well. And so I call this the Sahara Nilotic Expansions. And so this study from Becker, 2011, was uh, basically some osteological analysis on skeletons found in the Wadi Hawa region. And um, these were just some of their conclusions, and they will help us understand this map here as well, which I will explain in later detail after we read. 
So it says uh, the Jebel Sahaba Tushka population constituted an old Nilotic and um, an old Nilotic and early population of the Malian Sahara, a younger Saharan part of this complex. The pre Lysabran groups probably colonized Wadi Hawar from the east, either during or soon after the original Sahara Nilotic expansion. Unlike the pre Lysabran groups, the Lysabran groups, people who originated somewhere west of the Wadi Hawar, they entered the region in the context of a later secondary Sahara Nilotic expansion. In the process, um, the incoming Lytabin groups absorbed many members of Wadi Hawar's older pre Lytabin population. Um, firstly, the series as a whole displayed very strong affinities with the prehistoric sample from Mali and Sahara. Um, and I guess they have a couple of sites here. And modern material from southern Sudan and to a lesser extent Chad. Secondly, the pre later burn groups and the later burn subsamples were closer to the prehistoric Malian as well as modern and South Sudanese material than they were to each other. Thirdly, the groups pre um, pre later burn individuals approached the late Pleistocene's sample from Jebel Sahaba um, under certain circumstances. A theory offering other. Uh, this. Thirdly, the um, group of later burn individuals approached the late Pleistocene sample from Jebel uh, under certain circumstances. A theory offering explanations for these findings was developed according to this theory. The entire prehistoric population of the Wadi Hawar belonged to a Sahara Nilotic population complex. The Jebel Sahaba Tushka population constituted an old Nilotic. Uh, an old Nilotic and early population of the Mali and Sahara um, part of this complex. Um, the pre Lysabran groups probably colonized the Wadi from the east either during or soon after the original Sahara Nilotic expansion. Under, unlike pre Lysabran groups, increasing eridification of the Wadi Hawar region, oh, oh yeah. increasing eridification of the Wadi Hawar region ultimately forced its prehistoric inhabitants to abandon the Wadi. Most of them migrated south and west. They or they or groups closely related to them probably were the ancestors of the majority of nilo saharan speaking pastoralists of modern day southern Sudan and eastern Chad. And so here we have the different groups. So this wavy line, Lakaya phase. Um, this would have this would have been your pre lysabran and this would have been your lysabran And so these people, these pre lysabran or wavy line, I'll just call them wavy line. These people were hunter-gatherers moving in from the Nile Valley during an earlier, um, an earlier, how do I say this, uh, an earlier Sahara Nilotic expansion, and these people would uh, uh, enter the Wadi Hawar from the from the west during a later uh, Sahara Nilotic expansion. Okay, so yeah, what we have is that we have the pre lighter band and the lighter band. Okay, and um, essentially. What I think is that they both lived up here and some populations of the places such as Jebel Sahaba, they had people who are similar to those found in the Mali Sahara and an old Nilotic population. And so here we have these theories kind of backed up because the, the lights have been, according to some, or according to Deminda, were a northeastern nilo saharan speaking while we had the pre lighter which according to demendo was a cushitic speaking so here we're going to look at the works of claude really and what he has to say about this and the populations of wadi Hawar. so he says we might therefore suppose that the speakers of proto east es which is eastern sudanic were already cattle raisers as domestication is not attested in wadi Hawar before 4000 bce one must suppose that either Proto-Eastern Sudanic appeared at this time and in this place, which is Demendo's opinion, or that Proto-Eastern Sudanic is, late, is earlier and appeared somewhere else, which is my opinion. First, the first traces of domesticated cattle in Africa are known on the southern sides of the Libyan deserts, not far from the Sudanese borders. Um, Naptaplea, Burr, Kisieba and Kilf Kibber, the latter being famous for his wonderful rock paintings. For not to play it, domesticated cattle remains have been dated to 8000 BC. This early date has recently been confirmed by the discovery of El 
Barga, a site close to Kerma, of similar remains dated by radiocarbon to 7000 BC. The analysis of the Cologne team, C. Cooper and Krupp Pillin, 2006, have shown that the population of the region of Nataplea and Gilfkeber where desertification occurred as early as the six, as, as, as early as the end of the sixth millennium, went south to Wadi Hawar and some other northern Sudanese sites in search for hospital pastures for their cattle. In my opinion, the emergence of proto Eastern Sudanic probably took place uh, in the south of Egypt, where animal husbandry appeared much earlier than Wadi Hawar. The desertification of the Egyptian desert caused an initial diaspora between the region, uh, between the Eastern Sudanic groups. I'm sorry. One of these groups went further south to Wadi Hawar region, developing a specific culture during the course of several centuries before increasing aridity caused a second diaspora that drove them to different regions. This scenario of, of a double diaspora explains the common lexicon for cattle in Eastern Sudanic groups and leaves enough time for these groups to acquire considerable linguistic differences. Okay. And so, what do we see here? Well, we can see that according to the works of Claude Rilly, in contrast to the works of Deminda, Claude Rilly says that the Eastern Sudanic speakers, who most likely would have been um, the lighter band, according to Demendal, originated in southern Egypt. Because according to Demendal, the pre lighter band were Cushitic speaking people, but may have had a similar origin, is what I'm guessing. And so, again, this uh, supports, again, this is supported through both of the archaeology as well. And so what we can establish is that everyone living in here once upon a time lived here, which is basically the point. So here, um, just a, again, more comparisons. And it says, firstly, the, the late Pleistocene population from Jebel Sahaba and Wadi Halfa, the early Khartoum human remains from Sagai, Shabona and Khartoum Hospital, the Khartoum Neolithic skeleton material from Kadiro, the Wadi Hawar series, which is basically all the people along Wadi Hawar, whether they clustered with Chadians or South Sudanese, Eastern Chadians as to be specific, and certain contemporary nilo saharan speaking groups from Southern Sudan are all members of the same continuous biologically sub-Saharan population complex. Secondly, the morphological differences between the members of the, this population complex are the result of a diachronic decrease in overall robustity. The A2 Project's last field team also included the author. The survey and excavations in 2006 led to the excavation of two more individuals at Abu Tarabi, which is a site in Lower Wadi Hawar, and the discovery of several very promising new sites in Jebel Abiyad, which is a little bit of north of Lower Wadi Hawar, and the area between Jebel Abiyad and Lower Wadi Hawar, see Jesse 2008. And so here we have little pictures kind of showing us the uh, comparisons and how they match them up. And so, like, the most important thing is we can see that they are clustered, they are shown to cluster with uh, Southern Sudanese for the most part. Um, so Abu Tarabi and Conical Hill, these are both sites in Lower Wadi Hawar. They clustered more with Southern Sudanese. Um, and then uh, I think this is Jibrana. This is actually in Upper Wadi Hawar, and they clustered with the Chadians. Um, and so, again, this is not a surprising because according to the Wadi Hawar diaspora model, the Chadians living in the, or the individuals in Upper Wadi Hawar, around places like Gibrana, went to Chad, they migrated to Chad, while people in the Lower Wadi Hawar, they kind of migrated south, and we'll kind of see these uh, migrations illustrated uh, later on. But the Lower Wadi Hawar were... Um, is uh, the lower Wadi Hawar where the um, nilotic and pre nilotic and uh, nilo saharan speakers? So, again, we just have more radiocarbon dates and with the culture. So, wavy line and lighter, lighter band 
Herringbone is also kind of like a, it's almost like a lower Wadi Hawar culture as well, which was kind of, I think it, what I think what it was, it was the mixture of uh, mainly a lower Wadi Hawar culture because uh, lower Wadi Hawar ended up getting influenced by middle Wadi Hawar. The lights are been co- complex was a culture in middle Wadi Hawar and it ended up influencing the individuals of lower Wadi Hawar. And, uh, but the individuals at lower Wadi Hawar still remained a little bit distinct. And so they created in this new culture called herring, herring, herring bone or herring bone or whatever it's called. So here again, we got conclusions. Unlike pre lights band groups, lights band groups originated somewhere west of the Wadi Hawar. The groups closely related to them are probably the ancestors, the majority of Nilo Saran speaking pastoralists of modern day Southern Sudan and Eastern Chad. The pre lights band group probably colonized Wadi Hawar from, uh, East, either during or after the uh, original Seven Atlantic expansion, they entered the region uh, in the context of a later secondary uh, Atlantic Seven Atlantic expansion. In the process, incoming lighter band groups absorbed many members of Adiwar's older lighter band population. Okay, which is actually pretty interesting because the Mindo. 2022 in his paper new, new linguistic prehistory of Nubia actually says that there was admixture between the uh, lights of band and pre lights of band individuals yet they still cluster or consider the same biologically continuous biological sub-Saharan uh, complex which is very interesting so here we have a map of lower water Hawar everything east of Jebel Rahib or this place called Rahib, is uh, lower, okay? And then we have the Wadi Al-Milk area. We have Deba. We have Kerm up here. We have Khartoum right there, okay? This is the Nubian now. This is the Nile Valley here. We have the Nile Bend. We have the Jazeera sitting right here, okay? And middle Wadi Hawar is everything west, okay? And then here we have, again, this is from uh, Domingo's uh, Linguistic Prehistory of Nubia. So we have migrations of the pastoralist lighter band groups from the west. So here, but the first the migration, right, was the hunter-gatherer dotted wavy line people. According to Domingo, they spoke Cushitic languages, okay, and they entered around 5,000 to 4,000 BC. And the lighter band entered about 4,000 to 2,000 BC. And uh, Hindesi phase migrations, which are the migrations associated with the Wadi Hawar diaspora, especially with the uh, Nilotic and pre Semitic speakers. This happened, but this, so we uh, Nilotic people basically started migrating south. Pre Nilotic and pre Semitic speakers not started migrating south during the Hindesi phase, which was, as you can see here, 2200 to 1100 BC, somewhere in between this time. And so, uh, my hypothesis or my suppose what I suppose is that this migration here, moving towards Khartoum, is a, the migration of the proto or the pre-Nilotic and pre-Semitic speakers 